It is 12 noon. Welcome to the Dorman Lunch and Learn. My name is G. Trulia. I know you guys kind of probably missed us for the past two months. Unfortunately, I had a issue and uh, I'm back. How's that? So today what we're going to cover is this Dorman Lunch and Learn will cover all the components of R1234YF. Let's make a mental note. It's similar to R134A, uh, the air conditioning system, along with step and stuff instruction of how to test, recover, evacuate, recharge, add oil dye to the system. Uh, there are no oilers on 1234YF machines. You cannot get an oil bottle to put oil in. Reason being, you have electric vehicles like this vehicle we have here, a 21 Chevy Bolt full electric. And if you put any PAG oil in there, okay, that is not made specifically for that system, you will have an issue. And what that issue will be is an isolation fault. Isolation faults cut the electric voltage off um, some cars shuts the whole car down. Uh, the newer vehicles, they just shut the system down. It would be a very, very expensive repair, even if there's one drop of PAG oil in there. So we have a special oiler that just is for hybrid and electric vehicles, and we put non-conductive oil in there, which would be a POA or a special oil from the manufacturer. Usually the special oil is only going to go in if you're changing a component, the condenser, the evaporator, the receiver dryer, okay, or an accumulator dependent on the car. You would put whatever amount of ounces they'd want in that component. Same with the compressor. But if you're just adding some oil because maybe it blew some of it out, you had a leaky Schrader valve, you're just going to add a universal type of POE oil, and you never go over two ounces. Usually what we use here is a hybrid electric POE that has dye in it. That way if there's a leak, you can see it. So we got a lot here to go over, the do's and don'ts. This stuff is currently over $50 a pound. Uh, sometimes you'll pay 70, this is the last batch that we bought. The stuff that's in the machine is still at $70 a pound, so you don't want it to leak out or have a problem. So today's vehicles are more involved, so it's important to use the right diagnostic approach. So let's go over to the machine here, because I gotta start this process, and then we'll go through the slides. First thing here, my machine is on. It already identified the type of refrigerant that is in this machine, 1234YF. My gauges are in a vacuum. Why would they have to be in a vacuum? Well, you may have loose hose ends. And if you have a loose hose end, well, that can be an issue. A lot of times they can be loose here or loose where they connect to the machine. And if you're not holding that vacuum, that means you can get air into the system. Air in 1234YF causes hydrofluoric acid, just like in 134A. It eats away from the inside out of the component, whether a receiver dryer, whether it's an evaporator, a condenser, a hose, so we don't want that. And if you have any questions as we're going through, please put them in there. I'll take a look once we hook it up. One of the first things we're going to do is let's switch to that other camera. I'll move over there. We're going to show you we've taken off the high and low caps. So here's our caps in my hand here. Well, it's always backwards, which is very difficult. There we go, high and low. We put them in a place that you're not going to forget to put them on. And here's our high. Here's our low. So what we also have is this thing here. And you go, what's this thing here? Lower or high, there we go. This here is a sealant detector. Now, if you've ever gone into any big box store or maybe pot stores, they all sell these big cans of refrigerant and they say there's 
dye in it, okay? There's dye, but there's also sealant. And if you put sealant in, it could ruin your machine because it's epoxy and it could clog up something in the vehicle system. So you don't want that. To protect your equipment, I mean, we have two 1234YF machines. Our snap-on one is probably somewhere in the 12,000 plus range. This one here is probably nine plus thousand. It may have gone up. And that's just for 1234YF. So you don't want to ruin your machine and there's not many repairmen. Like this time of year, there's being June going into July. If your machine clogs up, you're in trouble. Now, what I have to do is I'm gonna put this up here. There's a little ball. I don't know if you can see that ball. There's a little ball way at the bottom. There's a little O-ring here that I'm gonna pick up and put on it. And it's real difficult for me to see this. Everything's upside down on this particular um, internet connection. Uh, Mary, can you get my glasses over there? Safety first, we never, so here's my safety glasses. Oh, it's so hard to tell what up, up is down, down is up. I gotta remember that. So I'm gonna put my safety glasses on and what I'm gonna do here is make sure this connection this connection is screwed all the way back, okay? So this has to be screwed back. I'm gonna put this on the high side, and let me adjust the camera. I'm gonna press down on it. I'm gonna turn this down, and Mary, maybe you could come here and hold this for me. And it's, it's really ridiculous. Let's say you gotta to come to me to get it in the picture. So watch what happens to this ball once I screw this down. Now we're not gonna leave this on here five minutes or so for the simple reason we have to, we already did it, we made sure there's no sealant in it. So when this ball is here, we put this on and if the ball dropped down you would have sealant in this vehicle if you had sealant in the vehicle you would want to use something different so mary will stay there holding it doreen's going to switch to this other camera and we're going to show you what we have on each of our air conditioned machines you got to get on this this is an air sep filter basically it's called recycle guard if you have sealant in the system you want to prevent it from going into the machine okay so you can see the top of it you take your air condition hoses from the machine you first put this in a vacuum okay you don't want any air going in the hoses to go inside the system this high and low side here you connect the hoses from this they're right here there we go. You connect this to the car. That way, what you're doing is everything you recover into the machine goes through this filtration system and that prevents your machine from being ruined. Does that make sense? Now, if you're working on an electric car like this, there's one other thing. So this is their oldest style and this is not a commercial for them, but I teach this in my hybrid and EV classes. This is, you can see, has an electric component here. And the newer one, because the refrigerant is flammable, they have to go through special testing. This one has been tested and retagged and sent back to me, okay? And basically, you would hook your high and low here, connect it to the machine, and basically, you would burn any PAG oil that's in the car. So when some of our customers had their air conditioned service elsewhere, many people, you know, maybe not as much yet with 1234YF, but definitely with 134A that has an oiler on it, you press the button, this is a, this bottle right here is for the waste oil that you measure to come out of the system. And I'll take this thing out of the way and put that over here. So what you do, and you can see we use tape here. So like today, 
will take that tape and we will basically put it here or you can mentally write down the level on the bottle. When we recover refrigerant, if it takes out a lot of ounces of oil, two things we could have. One, someone over oiled it and two, it just removed oil that you may have to put back in it. So we're going to show you a couple of things there. So this is for hybrid and electric vehicles to prevent PAG oil from going from your supply into the vehicle. This is why, again, this does not have a way, any 1234YF machine does not have a way to add any oil into the system. Any questions on that? Okay. Good. So now what we're going to do, we're going to look at Mary over here. That's probably enough time. And we already checked this out. Notice the ball is not down. It's actually up. Okay. Could they see that pretty good, Doreen? Yes. It's always backwards. Drives me nuts. Okay. So now that we're done with that, I am going to unscrew this. And I'm going to take this off. Now, the tricky part, and we can put that on the table over there, Mary. The tricky part is following the machine. So what we want to do here is go in. We had vacuum on it. Our gauges are still good. We're going to hit recover. Now, this vehicle, it says takes, and it, it has POA, POE, let me show you that oil. So right here, it's a POE oil. 1234YF, 0 0.725 kilograms. Uh, maybe I can try to blow it up, let's say. Where's the zoom? A uh, sealant detection tool is basically through uh, M, I think it's MCA Neutronics. First, it was Baccarat Neutronics, now it's Neutronics. What's the kit look like? Uh, I think they still say Neutronics on the kit. So you'll probably get it, and you could buy that from uh, Napa, CarQuest, O'Reilly's. You know, you probably have to let them know what you're looking for, okay? So now we don't do anything else until we see what the machine tells us to do. Okay. So now it says recover. Okay. Going to probably have to do this so you can see it better. I'm going to hit the arrow button. And the machine is going to tell you what to do. It says refrigerant identification do not connect service hoses to the car. Now, normally, I'll be honest with you, what you usually do is you hook the hoses to the car on 134A. Follow your machine. They're all very similar, whether I use the Snap-on one or this or Robin Air. You have to follow the procedure on the machine. Okay, so I'm going to hit do not connect the hoses so I don't have them connected. Check in pressure. So now it's going to do something probably with the gauges. Check your tank. And by the way, it's not a good idea to shake your machine. Hang on the machine. Don't do that. And once we have the machine hooked up and it's doing its thing, we're going to basically go through some slides that give you good information in your handout. The video froze. It's on your end. Double check your connection. Everyone else, can you see okay? 
So right now what it's doing, it's clearing the system. And you could expect about 15 minutes to a half hour more time to do a 1234YF than a, than a 134A. Okay, so everyone is good there? Good, thank you. Okay, so now you see what it says? Connect the blue hose. So only the blue hose. Don't get crazy and connect your high side hose. This is gonna be for identification only. So what I'm gonna do is, Mary, you wanna put that on there? Watch your step. Let's go to this camera. Okay, so that goes on the little connector down there, the big line. Yep. It hasn't moved over yet. Hang on. All right, go ahead, Mary. And once it's locked down, you're going to turn, turn the valve and open it. Connect the service port and then open the coupler. Open means put it down so it reads the pressure. The gauge went up. Switch back. You'll see the gauge went up. And roughly in here, we're in the air-conditioned shop. It is, got to take the glasses off to see up there, roughly 70 degrees in here. And this is showing us 80. Now, I should tell you, this car ran. We wanted to make sure the air condition worked before. So we're a little higher than normal. Okay. Roughly one PSI equals one Fahrenheit. So we should roughly be, and under the hood is probably 80 degrees. Even though this is an electric vehicle, I feel heat under here, which is normal because the electronics ran. Now, it says connect that. We did that. We're going to hit the button. And now it should be, it's doing a calibration. So as it's calibrating here, it's taking a sample from the low side. Now you gotta be careful. If you buy a machine and the price is low on 1234YF, you basically bought a machine without an identifier in it. There's two different SAE J standards. The older machine does not have, it came either with it or without it. A lot of people bought it without it and then you gotta buy a separate identifier that can identify 1234YF. So you can see it takes some time, you can't rush this, there's nothing I can do to make it go faster, okay? So who sells the sealant detector? We said if you didn't hear that before, that is MC, M, MSA, MSA it is, MSA Neutronics, okay? And um, you could buy that from your local pot stores or whatever. Okay, so right now it says refrigerant identification. Let's look at this carefully. It says R1234YF, 100% and 0% air. Very important. If you even have some air in it, you want to recover it and get the air out of the system. How does air get in it? Well, if you're low on refrigerant, air usually will take its place. And again, 1234YF and that causes hydrofluoric acid. So we hit the check mark here with the arrow. And now it says, you know, open the high side coupler. So now we're going to put the high side coupler on and always make sure that this is back and watch our gauge when Mary puts that on. She's going down to put that on there. So as soon as she sets that on, we should have close to equal pressure. So each side should be equal. Did you, you didn't turn it down yet, Mary. You gotta turn it, turn it. That's opening it is what they call here. Go all the way. Now notice, look at that. You got about 82, 
and you got 82. Both gauges are equal. Why is that important? Well, that tells me there's not a clog in the system. Does that make sense? Not a clog in the system. Okay. Does anyone know out there what percentage, when we go to charge it, we're going to recover it now, what percentage of a charge does any of the machines put in? You can't fill them up. I'll give you that. What percentage? Why don't you type that in there? You could win a Dorman T-shirt. We just would need, need your email. Okay, so make sure the hoses are connected to the vehicle. Are they both open? Yes, they are. And now it's going to start the recovery process. So remember, we're supposed to pull out 0.725 kilograms. So now I'm going to leave this because there's nothing I can do. We're going to go to the slides over here. And here's some AC facts. Over 80% of new vehicles have 1234 YF installed. A lot of people are trying to stay away from buying a machine. I mean, we've been using it here for years in the shop. Reason being, in the beginning, it wasn't that our customers had the cars with it. They were all under warranty. The body shops. We did a lot of stuff for body shops. Now most of the body shops have bought a machine. Of course, the insurance company doesn't like the billing cycle, right? Mercedes-Benz and Mazda are still kind of holding out. That means they're not sticking it in their cars. They're paying a fine. 1234YF goes for $50 to $60 a pound currently on the street. So that means five to $600 for a 10-pound container. That's a lot of money. We have two of them in stock at all times because we do enough of it. Um, starting January 1st, 2018, so quite a few years ago, if you don't have a refrigerant license, now it doesn't make you fix cars better, but you need a license to buy the refrigerant, okay, and actually work on the vehicle, taking the air conditioning system apart, recovering it, charging it, where do you get the license? You can go to Max, the Mobile Air Condition Society, or it has some new name that I forgot, but Max Mobile Air Condition Society, or a ASE. You can do a home test or a proctored test through Max ASE certification. You pay for it. You can do it at home. They may even have it online now, and you can send it in. So AC commands are important. And you can hear the machine how noisy it is. It's recovering stuff. One of the things you always want to be aware of, this vehicle came in a complaint of poor or no AC cooling at times. Everyone always think, thinks it's the refrigerant. Not necessarily the refrigerant problem. Okay? The screen shows that there's bi-directional AC compressor page that is valuable PID information that shows disablement history. So right here, it is disabling this information. It sees that the coolant was hot, the idle is unstable, and it has turned the air condition command off. Very, very important that when you go to check an AC system out, this is not your father's Oldsmobile, Plinet, Pontiac, Saturn, they're all out of business, your ass will be out of business. You need to connect a scan tool that is capable enough to give you this information. So many times you'll be in a computer lockout. The control panels on the vehicle. Well, does air really come out from the floor or the windshield? You know, when you want cooling in the car, you want air right here. Right? You want to come into you. Over the years of running different shops, okay, shop number 12 I'm in, I don't run 12 shops, I'm on shop number 12, I could tell you over the years, many people have come in, they went somewhere else to get their air condition repaired or charged, 
and they didn't need refrigerant, it was a blend air door problem. Meaning, air wasn't coming out at them, air was going to the windshield. Does that make sense? That is always the default, is the windshield. Very important to know that, okay? So all these types, whether it's an old manual type, slide type, electronic type, they all need to be checked out. If there's any questions, type that in there. I'm gonna take a look as we go on to the next slide, okay? Air distribution. Is that blower blowing? Is stuff coming out? Most of the door problems and or evap, yep, flow. You could have doors not going right. Very good, okay. All good stuff there you guys are typing in. So air distribution. Did someone go in there to put a heater core in a car or an evaporator? If they did, did they have some leftover parts, you know, that you can't see it from where I live type of stuff? Well, some people play that game. They leave things out, things are missing, things are not in the right place. Always make sure all of the air distribution system works properly. Here's what I like using. A clogged cabin air can do you in. This pile is not expensive. You can buy this thing online. It is a PMA 90. It will tell you the temperature and the speed of the air coming out. You want 13 to 16 miles an hour or 1,000 to 1,450 cubic feet per minute, okay? If anything is less than 10 miles an hour, approximately 900 standard cubic feet per minute, you are gonna have a problem. You will not have proper air distribution, which will then in turn think the customer is not getting cool enough. Well, look at the difference of these filters. Look at that dirty filter versus a clean one. And the difference of air that could flow through the system. Refrigerant identification. Here's what the kit looks like. Again, uh, MSA Neutronics. They sell them in all the major parts stores. Probably 300 bucks or so. But the 300 bucks or so is gonna be worth your while. Gonna be worth your while in, Mary, tell him to go there. Sorry, we got a delivery. So that's one of the things, glasses are important. There's a brand new detector and an identifier, okay? Those are the things that you need. Those are the things that you need. Okay, so let's see if there's any questions. Okay, so plug cabin air is definitely a problem. And 15%, very good. That's a question I asked earlier. I see a lot of guys got 15%. Tell you what, you guys that have 15%, I see a couple of you, type in your email, we'll send you a shirt. Very good, okay. Because you cannot fill it up. So please put in the guys with 15%, throw your email in. I see two people there, the last two. Okay. Now moving on, you know, one of the major problems is, here's the machine we're using today. Did you check your vacuum pump oil? Vacuum pump oil needs to be replaced if you don't have any spare vacuum pump oil around, you may get a message on your machine and you don't have the oil, guess what? You're not gonna be working on a car. It will lock the machine out. So it's important to make sure you have a spare filter. We always do that. All the new machines tell you how much you have left on your filter percentage-wise and also the oil. So right now, it looks like the recovery is done. Remember we marked the uh, oops, oil bottle. It vibrated down, but no, no oil came out. So I'm gonna screw this bottle back on. Um, it says oil draining right now. So, well my tape fell. But basically right here, 
We don't have an issue with oil. How much oil came out? So we're going to put zero. Clean my hand here. And we're going to hit enter. So no oil came out. It keeps a record of that. That means it took it, the refrigerant out, you know, at a good pace. Now, normally when you go into vacuum and it took one pound, 4.8. So Mary, if you could write that down somewhere, one pound, 4.8, and we can convert that, right? You can write it on the back of that paper. Yep. So 1.48. We're going to hit OK. And now we're going to do vacuum. Now you're going to notice it's going to come up with this. This vacuum has, it's a high vacuum pump, high CFMs. 30 minutes is minimal it should go. If it's your own car, you want longer. Water will boil at 59 degrees Fahrenheit under a vacuum, OK? So basically, I'm going to hit yes, and we're not going to let it go. You see it says 15 or 30. I'm just going to put five minutes. Any questions, Doreen? All right. So we're just going to let it go five minutes, and then it's going to go into a mandatory, mandatory vacuum check. And by the way, there's my filter. I got 82% left on my filter before I have to replace it. And now you can see the gauges, they're gonna be sucked down into a vacuum and there's a mandatory hold. So I'm not gonna waste your time staring at that. We're gonna go back to the slides here. If I can find my clicker. Okay, here we go. First of all, you know, you bang your machine around. You can see the bay doors in the background. Many times we don't do the air conditioned service inside. If we have cars up on a lift, we're not gonna waste the bay. We're gonna do it outside. We wheel the machine out there. Well, when was the last time you checked to see if your scale is accurate? Make sure there's no tools on it, there's no dirt on it. If you lost a little weight, it's called the tower weight, okay? You want to know what the tank weighs and what that weight is. So let's say the weight is three ounces and your machine shows that you have, I'm going to say 12 ounces in it, three more ounces, you should basically have 15 ounces. If you're more than one ounce off, you got a problem. Here we're doing it with pennies, pennies in a plastic bag, 33 pennies roughly equals three ounces. So that's an important step. Now, when you go checking the system for leaks, don't think that vacuum, vacuum is totally different than pressure. But of course, you know, in the, in the industry, they say, oh, if it holds vacuum for, you're gonna see a mandatory 10 minutes, the system has no leak. Big lie, big lie. There is no way that vacuum is telling you there's no leak. You gotta put it under pressure, okay? You're gonna see a little video coming up of we use CO2, okay? Here, you know, it says nitrogen, you know, you don't have a nitrogen detector. You do need an approved 2913 electronic refrigerant leak detector that we're gonna talk about in a minute. We use CO2 along with bullseye, okay? Not a sales pitch. CO2 you can use with your gas analyzer or the bullseye kit. You could buy the bullseye foam that turns from pink to yellow if you have a leak, it's a lot easier. I should say here and fix this that Robin Air does use a special CO2 setup. They try to copy Bullseye, but basically Bullseye has a, um, uh, a patent on the CO2 setup. So that's why they probably did that. Um, J2913, the leak detector, um, is right over here. Let me show you that. Mary will be using this in a car in a little bit. Okay. So this is a special leak detector that we'll be putting in the vehicle. This has to go with the air going down to the floor ducts and the fan on low to detect any refrigerant when it puts in 
15% of a charge. Does that make sense? Okay. And it detects down to three grams a year leak or 0.1 ounce. So it's very, very sensitive. But what we do is we test the system with CO2 first. And we have found leaks that that special leak detector doesn't find. And it doesn't mean the brand is bad or whatever. CO2 is a smaller molecule, molecule than, than the R1234YF. One pound of AC pressure roughly is one Fahrenheit. Roughly one Fahrenheit, okay? With the AC system at rest, low and high should be equal. We've seen that on the machine. If they're not equal, you got a clog somewhere, an important step. Now here's what happens when you don't use a sealant detector. This is something that a consumer or maybe even a shop put into the vehicle and you see all the sludge, that is epoxy sealant. This will ruin hoses, ruin your compressor, ruin your system, and ruin your air conditioned machine. You don't want that. If my machine goes down, at least I have two of them, but if it goes down and I only had one machine, I'm out of luck. Try to get that service guy to come out and repair it. It's going to be a while. Okay. We talked about this. This is the sealant guard. You should buy one of these definitely. Okay. Where do you get those? At your parts store. The Nappas, the O'Reilly's, the CarQuest, and so on. Or you can contact Aircept directly. This is the hybrid EV setup. Again, they're coming out with a New one, it burns the PAG oil, so nothing goes in the vehicle. Now it sounds like, before I play this video, it sounds like the machine is done with vacuum. It, it is. It says complete. Okay. And now I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna go to recharge, but watch what's gonna happen. It's not gonna allow me to charge. Okay. So now I go charge. And I want to hit this button here. Now it's going to clear the tank. You're going to hear like psh, psh, psh. These are automatic air purges. If your machine does not have automatic air purge, you're going to have to look at the pressure in the machine on the side of it and manually hit the button to get the air out. Most new machines are all automatic. So right now it's still checking the stuff out. It's looking for target air pressure. And there's nothing you can do to make this bigger. I started using a new machine. It's not connected to the power jet. I don't know what the power jet is. There's one guy's email in there. Thermal imaging works real, real well to see if there's leaks. We're gonna show that in a video. I changed mine from 1%, oh, well, you had to get the answer right in the beginning, sorry about that. So now it says, does the system utilize a high voltage compressor? And we're gonna say, yes, this is a high voltage compressor. Okay. Connect the service hose, connect the hoses to flush ports, open service port couplers. So that means I got to take it off the car, I got to put it to the back of the machine. Okay, so this is something I got to find the 1234YF connectors, low side, high side. I got to unscrew these connectors back here. And this is going to be what they call a hose flush. It is, you can get that other one, Mary. And I'm going to show you where this is on the machine. I'm going to switch this camera over here. Okay, so here's the ports in the back. Okay, Mary, you got it unscrewed. And lift up. And... I 
I screw these in like it tells you to do. So you can see what it's saying here. Charge service port hoses, please wait. So we're waiting for that to clear. I don't have, I don't have so as this is flushing out, we'll continue on with some slides. Or, and watch this little video. So this is important too. Many times you're not gonna know if you got a bad compressor. Well, watch this little video. We're gonna connect this to the high side. Now you should have sound on your side, basically right here. And the low side. Is a sight glass. And we're hooking up to a 1234YF and truck here. We're gonna look at this high and low this side. Diagnostic watch what happens in this Airset. sight glass. I don't know if you could hear sound. I'm going to open up the high there? side. Watch what okay. comes I in. I just don't hear it here. So watch the refrigerant coming now, this in. this is refrigerant the and oil This will tell you if here. you have dye we're gonna or oil. We're going to let it sit. And we're going to look through and see if we have any debris in there. If there's any oil, I could tell you there's some dye in there. Okay? Not from anything we put in from the factory. You see how that lights up? Okay. So we're, we can see if we have a problem. Also, you want to see if your compressor is working in the amount of time here we have. I shut off the high side. I open up the low side. Watch what happens. We are going to suck that down. You see it boiling? As it's boiling, the bubbles, that is telling us the suction side of the compressor is actually pulling this in and open that very slowly. Okay. Now we let it go all the way. I'm going to open it up till there's nothing in there. And now that you're clear, we are going to shut the valve, both valve shut, and we can then shut the low and high side here. Okay, so we'll what you see in there the air tool that we just is used. that that basically and when you look at it, boiled here out. And here's a little chart to explain is basically so sound on looking it. at a good versus some bad here. So take a look at that. And this is important to get that sample. How do you know your compressor wasn't slugged, was not pumping? Well, you could see it right from here. You could see if you have too much dye or oil in there. If that thing was stained with oil and the oil was still in on that unit, you would have a problem, okay? People love putting oil in, especially with an oil bottle, okay? Okay, any questions on that? So basically what you've seen is the refrigerant Going in there, that car, you see the dye from the factory. You can tell if there's dye in there. The low side is the suction side. The high side is the discharge. So you've seen discharge. The compressor was able to pump stuff out into the glass. And the low side was able to suck it back in. You could see if there was any debris in there. If you had metal particles or whatever, it's a great tool that's probably under two, 300 bucks. One for 1234YF, one for R134A. So here's the new machine standard here as that machine is still doing its thing. Uh, all 1234YF machines do this, a leak check, vacuum leak check, a pressure leak check. This is mandatory. This procedure is mandatory since it's checking for flammable refrigerants. The maximum charge for a leak check is 15%. That was the question that a couple of guys won a couple of dormen t-shirts. So it checks for a leak in the evaporator. There is a DOT standard, Department of Transportation. When you get one of them, when we put either a heater core or an evaporator, we always pressure test it with CO2 before we put it in the car. Why? You don't want to put it in the car and find out you have a leak. That's going to be quite expensive labor-wise, right? Time is money. Some of the things to check leak equipment, your glasses, the dye 
And on this car, it could only be a PAG oil dye. Uh, the U-View light, a great light. Remember, dye has different spectrums. So sometimes if you can't see the dye, your light is not the correct light to find it out. That makes sense? So that being the case, and here we have the CO2 leak detector, and you can see it lit up. You see the light right there? And when we sprayed foam in the area it was showing us, that's where the leak was. I gotta close the service couplers here. Let me get my glasses on. So this is called hose flush. All right, I closed them. I'm gonna hit this okay. Please wait, you can see it's sucking it back in. It's probably gonna tell us to put them back on the car. And you can see the gauge is dropping pretty rapidly. So once it's satisfied, it'll tell us to go to the next step. And we're probably gonna run an itsy bit over, because unfortunately, I can't make the machine go faster. <laughs> I would like to. Let me see if you got any questions or comments. Do we need different gauges? Uh, if you're using gauges, yes. Um, a high voltage air conditioning compressor in cars and electric air conditioning compressor is built into the high voltage network on the car, mainly used for electric and hybrid vehicles. Yes, so always make sure if it's a hybrid that it does have some hybrids work off belts. Um, most shops keep separate gauges to prevent cross contamination. Well, there's a big difference between gauges and a machine. Nowadays, you know, if you want to make money, it costs money to make money, you should have a separate machine for each. Does 95% nitrogen, 5% hydrogen leak detection work? Um, they use some of that, Dale, in uh, the Robin Air setup. I um, only seen it demonstrated at max. It seems okay. But again, you know, the problem, you don't pinpoint it like using CO2 with the uh, bullseye because you got the foam. Start a new, new machine. Okay, we're all good with all that stuff there. So now it says disconnect the service hose from the flush block. Now again, you should always wear glasses. Our 1234YF is a minus 22 degrees. Um, and you hear that little poop that went out? It still had pressure in there. Now if I don't have glasses on and it goes in my eyeball, I'm pretty much messed up. Okay, so now I... I put the caps back on. And disconnect. We don't, we don't hook to the car until it tells you. Disconnect the hoses. Okay. I hit the arrow key. Now it says charge options. We're going to charge from high and low. We're going to hit units we're going to go in kilograms yep kgs mr blind here has to see kilograms we're going to hit enter it says select what port we're going to go through two ports and now we got to put the right amount of kilograms in so it's going to be zero seven two five so 0.725, okay, we're going to hit enter, make sure the hoses are connected to the vehicle and open. So now we got to put these back on, Mary, connect that, and we have Mary Partington here, a friend and a student from Massachusetts.
Foam is part of the bullseye leak detection kit. Don't keep, look, go like this, Mary. Down, on. If you leave your hand on it. This one's a little tougher. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta release it. A little different, okay. So right now it says check in leak. It's gonna check vacuum on it. As it's doing its thing, we'll go back. Mary, keep an eye on that gauge uh, set up there for me. See if it, what the machine says, okay. So let's go back to the slides here. So leak checking and look here when you have this kit, this is the number one area of leaks. The number one area of leaks is going to be the Schrader valve. Okay. Now you, you could spray foam there if you want, but um, this is a high area. Look at this one with the cap. With the cap, it had a leak. You see how the pink turned yellow? right through the cap. Always get a good cap and lubricate the seal in the cap. Keep some Q-tips around and some clean POE oil. Lubricate it a little bit. Never use metal caps. They had problems with metal caps with adhesion, meaning two dissimilar metals stick together. It'd be like the original TPMS, tire pressure monitor valves, that had that same issue. They would stick and break. So here, let's look at leak detection equipment. Here's a little video real quick. We're gonna use CO2, and here's our CO2 bottle. We know Bernie or ATS sells the little bottles. We wanna make sure we're putting 200 pounds of pressure in. So we're using a set, a regulator here, a regular shop hose. All our connectors fit our smoke machine, our air guns. We're gonna put it to this. We're actually gonna connect, this will go on the high side. We will put 200 pounds of CO2 right in. This is a special hose for 1234YF. We're gonna check with the ATS tool here to see if we have any leak, okay? So this will ensure us twice that we don't have a leak inside the vehicle with CO2, a smaller molecule, okay? And we will put this on the, um, the highest sensitivity. And there we put it on high sensitivity and we would make sure that there's no leak. If it did find a leak, I don't know if any, you see that? That's our hose leaking. It picked it right up. Okay, so there's always a little leak from some of these things here. We'd have to let that clear out. Get that fender cover. Brand new car, we do not want okay, any so issues. Okay, so we're gonna hook to the high side, and then we're gonna tighten okay. the valve down. And the tank is on. And then we'll just have to, yep, get that up put to this 200. up to 200. The tank is on, and my regulator. The black numbers are in bar and the red is 200. So we got right there, we have 200 PSI going in there. That is good. I can start it up. We can see the compressor is kicking on. So let's just test it. If the system came in empty, it tested the compressor for um, just operation, making sure that the compressor is going to turn on. So the car is running. Compressor. You heard the fan yep, kick on clicking. and off. So we're we're good there. And you would take that leak detector, and I have it in the car. So we're going to leave it there a couple of minutes, not for you, we're just going to leave it there for now. We're going to take this out in a second and we're going to check, we'll shut the car off, we'll check outside for a leak as well. 
So I'm going to shut the vehicle off. Check those valves out. There might be a sign of some right here from what we just disconnected, but. Then we can just take it along. We want to go below the valves to make sure none's leaking. And it's a good way to see if any Schrader's or anything are leaking. And we can go through the whole system with this. So any any leak, any points that are joints or anything like that, give them an extra. And good again, look. you could do this near the condenser. We did this inside. You want to make sure it is not a problem. So that we find there's no leak there. Remember, we are not going to recover this. Watch what Bill is going to do. Give Bill a clean rag. Give Bill this. Now, this is not refrigerant. Let's get that straight. This is not refrigerant. This is CO2. CO2 can be vented into the atmosphere since it's in the atmosphere. Turn the valve up slowly. And make sure we put that right on the clean rag, and then we're going to tighten this down slowly until we hear it start hissing out. Once we get to that point, we just let it go kind of slow. And you don't want to let it go too fast because the oil can spray, spray out of the system. So as long as you don't see any oil coming out, we're good. Just let it go until it stops, and then we can take this off. So that's, that's the last of it. We're going to loosen this up, take our fitting off. OK, so nothing came out. And now for added sure. security, that all the way out would help. There we go. We're going to evacuate it again. Okay, so we're going to put it in a vacuum. I highly recommend you do this after having CO2 in there. Okay, basically, uh, we're going to switch back to this one. We were on a 10 minute timer as that video was playing. So it's still putting it into a mandatory 10 minute vacuum. Not that I put it in there. Mandatory 10 minute vacuum, then it's gonna put 15% of a charge. Notice on the video, after the vacuum, what we did was add 200 PSI of CO2. There's a couple of questions. One, do you have to add ounces or kilograms to hoses? A 96 inch hose on some machines, you got to add two ounces for every 96 ounce hose. Some machines had a yellow hose connected gauges to the middle of the machine. That would be two ounces and a red and a blue hose, high and low. That would mean you would have to add six total ounces, so a very good question. Will you burn the compressor out? Absolutely not. We've been doing it for years. Uh, Bullseye, by the way, is an approved piece of equipment for General Motors and other companies are looking at it, okay? You could run the compressor without a problem. Uh, myself and of course Bernie Thompson who invented that with Neil Peterson, we did a bunch of testing. You know, I, we do it on every car here. Uh, one time Franklin found a leak on a condenser and did not run the compressor. Well, he sold the person a condenser and a receiver dryer Put it in, come to find out the car ain't cooling because the compressor was no good. Now you got to go back to the customer. Oh, they're not happy campers, let me tell you. So we always make sure that we test the whole system. Does that make sense? I'm going to look. I think there was another comment or question. Won't burn it out. Safety first is good. Uh, the foam comes in a kit. Yep, so we covered all that. We're doing the leak check and we're down to 47 seconds. Then it's going to move the screen. Uh, we are going to go over in a few minutes. If you have to get off, this will be posted on the Dorman Training website as well as the ATTS website with the videos. Because one video I'm going to have to kind of skip or we'll be here a little longer. But I wanted to give you the information. You know, it being air conditioned season, at Dorman Training, we want to make sure you're ready to handle the stuff that's going to come into your shop, okay? We want you to be able to make more money, work efficiently, and be safe at the same time. So four seconds, three seconds, two, one. It said it passed, and now you see this? 
it's putting 15 percent of a charge in there so even though we said we wanted a you know a 0 0.725 kilograms well guess what and mary if you can take the number we had in ounces switch it on your phone to kilograms okay ask for the conversion and see i found that most new vehicles are short about an ounce or so okay and think about all the vehicles that they have so you could either take what 7.25 kilograms in is in ounces and we can deduct it let's go back to the slides here condensers are a big problem we've done a few of these um, these are on GMC pickup trucks, Sierra trucks. They have a problem, and you can see the dye coming out. No extra dye was added in this. These are your big leakers. We always have new caps available. Remember, use a little lubricant. Lubricate these with a non-PAG oil. You know, have some of the assortments around. Low side, basically... You know, don't think of the air-conditioned system as a block of ice blowing air. Heat goes to cold, so the interior of the car is going to go to the low side that has low liquid refrigerant. It's going to boil it. It boils it, it's going to be sucked into the low side of the compressor. The low side of the compressor takes, let's say, 35 pounds or so, squeezes it, and makes it now a higher pressure being pushed out by the discharge side to the condenser. The high pressure turns into a high pressure vapor. It turns from a high pressure vapor to a low pressure liquid. It then goes to the receiver dryer where there is some oil in here. It dries out, there's a desiccant that takes moisture out of the system. It then goes up and through the expansion valve and the expansion valve, think of it as like a garden hose. A garden hose is like a sprayer if you want a fine mist, you would just squeeze it a little. If you want a stream to make it colder, it would open up the expansion valve and move it. So there's the expansion block, expansion valve, low side pressures, you know, dependent on the temperature where you're at. These are orifice tubes or capillary tubes. You can see the one here. This is called the fixed orifice. We use these. I have all these. I don't use them anymore. We use the variable one. And by the way, there are one O-ring and two O-ring type ones. Make sure you put the right one in and face it the correct way. The variable will give you a colder temperature, okay? And there's some of that information right there. When you have an orifice tube, same thing. You have a low side liquid. Uh, some of it can't not be boiled out to a vapor, so you have an accumulator. The accumulator keeps liquid on the bottom, only sucks vapor. Low side, roughly about 35 pounds, goes in here, compresses it to a high pressure vapor. The vapor condenses to a high pressure liquid. Then it goes through the orifice tube and the same setup. And there's your typical readings. Remember, outside pressures. I'm gonna take a look at the machine, see if there's any other comments here. Um, Okay, so short, low side, long, high side. Uh, low side is gonna be a different fitting size, uh, non-peg oil for lubricating the caps, that is correct. Couple of things I've made mandatory estimates are only after the system been inspected and debris service ports get replaced. That's a good idea. Okay, um, what did you say? You said why. Why what? Oh, non-PAG oil, because you do not want to put, a PAG is an alkaline. You don't want to put any of that in the system at all, even on the cap, okay? So right now, you can see this. It says now 15% of a charge has been put in, AC system, blower motor to the low position, so you can go in there, take, take that leak detector, okay? So Mary's gonna go in the vehicle, it tells us air condition switch to off, so you don't put the air condition on. You're just going to hold the button down, put the fan on, okay? And air distribution to the floor with a J2913 leak detector. Put the tip near it, and now go ahead, Mary. Just make sure you hold the button. No foot on the brake. No foot on the brake. 
Do not put the air conditioner on. Hold the button down. Okay. All the way. Okay. So now she has the button on. Air condition is on. Fan on low. Let's get the leak detector, Mary. So now the leak detector goes on. Doreen, you can get the camera this way. We're going to make sure we put the detector all the way to the floor. We're on low. The top part is 134A. This is the highest sensitivity already, three grams. Mary is going to put this with the fan on low. The car is not running the air conditioned compressor. Fan on low, and she's going to put it there. And if we hear beep, 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 put your foot in there, Mary. Put your foot in the car. OK, that way they don't have to hear the ding, ding. If this thing beeps, then we know we got a problem with the evaporator. Now that's just normal beeping. That means it's warmed up. If it goes beep, 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 there's one bar on this thing. Okay, there's no leak. I'm just gonna show them that. Okay, so you'll notice there's only one bar and you can shut the car off. Just hit, hit the button. Okay, now if it went beep, 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 then you know you got a problem. Now you see that? My bad breath made it go off. If that happened in there, you got a problem. So again, that's why I don't like these things. Come on, right? I'm not a big fan of these things, but by law, mandatory, you have to have it, okay? So now it's gonna ask you, did you perform this? We say yes. Okay, was a leak found? No. And by the way, these machines connect to internet. Sometimes, you know, especially in a the dealer, they take the VIN number. Does the system have any auxiliary rear, uh, rear air stuff? No. Okay, so now it's gonna charge the rest of it. I'll go back to some slides. Um, Okay, some guy's got to go, I get it. But you can always see the second part later on. Uh, what you should also know is a lot of systems like this have an IHX, internal heat exchange. So what you're doing, you have a low pressure vapor in the outer part of the hose. This is called super coolant, pre coolant And you have a high pressure liquid in the middle of the hose. Here's what it typically looks like on all these new vehicles. In fact, I'm going to show you on this vehicle. Mary, you can get over here and point to it. You see the top part right there? And uh, where am I? Oh, got to be. Everything is backwards. Sorry about that, guys. So you see where that's going? The little hose going into the big hose? That is exactly an IHX, okay? Moving along, uh, the system may have an ejector. Ejectors are, they consume less energy. You can see where it's located in the side of the tank. It recovers, the ejector recovers expansion energy, which was previously lost from an expansion valve. Drip tubes, super important. When you run that air conditioned compressor, you want water leaking on the floor. If no water leaks out, that means you're not pulling moisture out. If the water stays inside the vehicle, not only will it not get as cold, but you're gonna start growing mold, and mold could be very dangerous, okay? Here's a thermal Take a look at using our thermal imager. I'm gonna blow this up. This was the condenser, and right now that it's on, I'm going to show you a new picture that's going to be coming in. I just took the picture here. I'm here you go. Look at the difference oh, at between off and on. You could see heat transfer starting to happen. I think that's a great way to visualize what we were talking about of what's going on inside the condenser. And not only is that the physical temperature, but that's heat-laden 
Let vapor yep. that we have to get rid of and you can actually you should be able to actually watch it as it goes down and get cooler near the bottom all right now here's something that you should be aware of on Toyota and Lexus vehicles this is a short little video and we've used a few of these this year save the customer big money and we're gonna finish up in about five minutes okay Watch this little piece, it's a whole effect that fails. If it reads over 3.7 volts, this prevents the air condition amplifier. Sending a signal to the PCM to turn the compressor on. It is a dormant product, we're not trying to give you a sale. We use it here, in the shop. It's the real deal that is gonna save your customer money, you time taking a compressor out, watch this. The AC system on many 2010 and later Toyota and Lexus vehicles stops working when the AC compressor's refrigerant flow sensor goes bad. If you scan the vehicle with a diagnostic tool and get a B1479 trouble code, this failed sensor is probably the issue. This is a fairly simple part, but if you try to buy a factory replacement, you'll find the original manufacturer only sells it as part of an entire new compressor assembly. This costs hundreds of dollars and takes hours to replace. But this dormant OE Fix AC compressor flow sensor is available on its own, fixing the problem for a lot less money. And because this is an externally mounted Hall Effect sensor, there's no need to evacuate and refill the AC system at all, saving a ton of labor time. You'll simply disconnect the original flow sensor, remove the circlip that holds the sensor in place on the compressor, remove the sensor and replace it with the new one. Reinstall the clip, plug in the new sensor, and you're done. It's that simple. If you have a scan tool, you can clear the fault code once you've confirmed the repair. If you have any questions about this repair or any others, our tech line is always there to help. So basically, we've done them right in the car. You don't have to remove the compressor. He had it out to show you how simple it is. Let's take a look here, and we're going to call it quits real soon. First of all here, we filled up. 7.25 selected, charge dispensed 7.30. We have roughly 80 something pounds and about 80 something pounds right there. They're equal. What was the difference? Did you find that number out? What we took out and what went in? Yeah, we took out 23.68 ounces. And this is Okay, so you can't hear Mary because she's very quiet. But basically, we took out 23.68 ounces, and the charge is 25.57. So what did they do? They shorted again. Every new car I've had, okay, they shorted us. Thank you, Mary, for doing that. Okay, so right now, it is all set. We hit the OK button here, and start the car so you could start this up put the air condition on and now you would check the temperature we're going to kind of call it a day but watch the gauges and i'm going to let you go in by 15 after the hour okay so now the compressor is going to come on okay it stood foot on the brake and started it air condition on there we go, you can see the gauge moving. You can hear it, you can hear the electric motor. And notice we're gonna be, you know, 35, 40, and this should climb up 150, maybe 200, depending on the heat. But we got perfect readings there. We did start the car. Car health report gives you the information here. We could print this out. So now the customer has a, can you get on this paper, maybe come in a bit, or you can see it good? So it basically tells them what you did on the vehicle there with their percentages. And you can see the pressures there, 25, 184. This thing's gonna get very cold inside. Let me go back here and thank you guys for coming out. The rest of these slides, we did. all good information and, and video, just a couple will of minutes, be posted up once again on the Dorman Trainer website and on attstraining.com under videos, Dorman Lunch and Learn. And uh, we wanna make sure that um, if you have any questions, if you thought this was helpful, 
Okay, we try to keep it to an hour. This one always goes a little over when we do AC. Uh, give me a Y. If you thought it was useless, give me an N. So Y if it was helpful, N if it was no good for you. And let's see if you got any questions, I will answer them. Low condenser, drainage, yep, humidity, very good. Okay, looks like uh, the guys who hung on, um, you enjoyed it. We appreciate that. Um, switch me back for a second. From New York, I am G. Trulia for Dorming Training. If you have any questions, you could email me at G. Trulia, T R U G L I A, at dormanproducts.com. That's G. Trulia at dormanproducts.com. You guys that put your email in that won the shirts, congratulations. All he is for coming back, we appreciate it. We will be back in July with another Dorman training program automotive. Tomorrow, don't forget, heavy duty, part two. But gee, where was part one? Well, you can go either to the Dorman training website or you can go to ATTS and you will see part one so you can be right in there. I want to thank you for taking your time and wasting an hour and 16 minutes of your precious time. Hopefully it wasn't a waste and you got something out of it. From New York, G. Trulia, thank you again. Have a great day. Be safe.